Hey, this is AJ here with Effect Radio, and I am super excited to have Christina from the Whosoevers with us. You've probably heard her on the Ryan Reese show that airs on Saturday nights here on the Effect. She is also a plus size model, and she is sharing at the River Christian Fellowship Women's Tea and um sunday morning as well welcome christina thank you for having me aj yeah help me with your last name uh boudreau okay yeah thank ryan you. ryan ryan's always like boudreau <laughs> boudreau he's like just christina b yeah yeah, yeah. Okay. all right and i i'm curious because i heard that you are doing modeling mm -hmm. again yeah how did you get into that and yeah. was that something you did after like as a christian like to yeah yeah can you tell me a little bit about that yeah so i've been a part of the modeling industry for the last 15 years i started when i was 18 and it was really like my heart you know of you know i was like five nine in the fourth grade growing up you know and a size 12 my dad was a big french canadian guy from the east coast and my mom you know was a small woman from malaysia but i grew up in southern california you know where the idea of beauty was just like you know, like Victoria's Secret, you know, and just like yeah. very like, you know, cookie cutter. And so I struggled, you know, with anorexia and bulimia growing up and just believing that I had to be a certain shape or size to be beautiful. And so when the Lord really restored that area of my life, you know, I really wanted to go in to the modeling industry to help show girls around the world that beauty comes in all shapes and sizes, you know? And so that's been a part of my journey for the last 15 years. And, um, a couple years ago, I pulled most of my international contracts besides a couple in LA and San Diego. And, you know, I was booking jobs here and there, but I really was on kind of a hiatus from the industry and focusing more on like the whosoever's and missions and just traveling and, you know, being a light in the dark places for the Lord. And, you know, and during COVID, the Lord was really showing me how dark the world was getting again, you know, just with everything happening and just that the increase of young girls, like even sexualizing themselves like you see mm -hmm. young girls on yeah. on Instagram and and TikTok who are 12 years old and just posting very suggestive things and just you know v just like putting their bodies out there and the Lord was just quietly asking me like Christina will you go back in fully again not just one foot in and one foot yeah. out to be a light for me and I just said yes Lord and so over the last couple of years just have worked on you know completing, you know, my portfolio again, shooting with the top people in the industry. And this January, I'm going to be making like a full fledged launch in, but, um, it's so interesting that this whole, like even Balenciaga thing came out, you know, with just them sexualizing young kids and, and, yeah. you know, women in the industry. And that to me was my confirmation, even more of the Lord saying, Christina, this industry truly needs my gospel and my light. And so the last couple of years of finishing my portfolio has really been a deeper work of God preparing me because I had experienced the top of the modeling industry. I had yeah. been signed with the top people in the world, had worked with the top clients. So I really had no need or a desire to go back because yeah. I'm I'm on tour with whosoever is in these really raw places that I was like, why would I want to go back, you know, yeah. to like a surface level kind of world. And that has been my honest, like honest battle with the Lord of saying, God, I, I know that once I step back in, my life is going to change in the sense where, you know, I'm going to be, I'm not going to be around these very raw people anymore. I'm going to be around a lot of very dark individuals. Um, like I was shooting a, I had a shoot for Target in December and the girl on set, you know, one of the producers was like, who wants to get their cards read? And she's reading everyone's tarot cards oh, on set. Okay. So there's yeah. a lot of dark stuff, yeah. you know, in that industry. So that has been a deeper work of how God has had to prepare me going in. It's not just going in and taking photos. It's going in and really being a light to the producers, the models, the people, because there's a lot of, uh, there's a lot of darkness, a lot of witchcraft, a lot of, uh, you know, addiction behind the scenes, behind the camera of the yeah. industry. And so I'm really excited. I truly believe like Esther, it's for such a time as this. So I'm just ready to see what the Lord would, would have. Yeah. 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 And the spin off of that, yeah. I was going to also ask you yeah. about the dangers of yeah. social media. Yeah. And yeah. so the image that they have on Instagram yeah. and TikTok, especially now to have this certain image of your life and what that's doing to yeah. young girls, teenage girls, mm. even those that are older. 
yeah. that are in their 30s. Yeah. What, how do you feel, how do we mm. work against yeah. that or use that platform yeah. like you have to yeah. try to reach people? Yeah, you know, I, there's so many young people where back when I first started modeling when I was 18 and I'm 33 now, and as a curve model, you know, our, it's so cool because in the industry now before they, we never like when I first started when I was 18, social media wasn't a thing, mm -hmm. but now it is. Yeah. And so when I walked, a, when I took a break from the industry a couple of years ago, it was my agents, I was getting irritated because my agents were starting to want to control like my social media, you know, my okay. Instagram, what I posted and yeah. they would, and oh, you see all these girls, you know, like on social media, like TikTok, even models where to market themselves and you have all these like influencer people now too to market themselves the, everything has to be perfect it's this lifestyle thing like and you have all these apps that airbrush any flaws you know like i woke up today with like pimples on my chin that's like very normal but you have like these apps that airbrush that photoshop that so when you look at and i see some people where you see people on social media but then you meet them in person <laughs> i bet and, you do <laughs> and i'm just like how you you know, yeah. it's just this, yeah. they're two different things because a lot of people on social media now, it's you're acting and you're performing and young people all day long, they're just scrolling on their social media. They're taking videos and photos and editing themselves to put an image out there that their whole um, self-esteem is based around like likes, comments, follows. Mm -hmm. People are buying followers to to put an image out there. Yeah. But what it does to young people is that it conditions them to believe that they have to be perfect, that they have to be celebrated, that they have to be affirmed by others in order to have value or, or, or to have a sense of identity. But really what I have learned is that all of that comes through Christ alone. But, and that was, that was my big thing in going back in the industry is that even now what I love to post more than anything else is when I'm hanging out with youth kids, you know, when yeah. we're on tour in Chile yeah. or just, you know, playing my guitar at home and just sharing a Devo or just out with friends, you know, like I love that. But now going back in, I know that I'm going to have to like, be like, okay, Lord, I'm going to have to even surrender that part of myself to really realize that you now have called me in a strategic way to where I can still post authentic things. And I think in a world that's, you know, for some of you out there, instead of getting sucked into it, you can still post authentic things and be yourself, but you don't have to airbrush yourself. You don't have yeah. to Photoshop yourself. Like a lot of my modeling photos, like a big thing right now is like the unedited things. I love just the raw images of just when you're smiling, you know, yeah. and you're just out with friends because that's true joy. But what it has caused a lot of people to do is believe that they have to put this perfect image out there, which takes away from the authenticity and the realness of just people just knowing that they are enough just as they are in Christ, you know? Yeah. 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 That's amazing. Yeah. So what's some advice that you yeah. give to young girls that are struggling with that? Because yeah. you can't get away from social media. Yeah. Everyone's always like, well, what's your TikTok? What's your Instagram? Mm -hmm. What's, you know, so what would you be your advice even to someone that's, you know, a Christian in a youth group and mm -hmm. they're consumed by all of this? Yeah. What would be your advice to those? young people. Yeah. You know, one of my favorite things, is, you know, that Ryan Reese, you know, he's part of, he's in charge of a whosoever's group and he has a book called like killing the noise, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. And if you are struggling with that right now, if you're a young girl struggling with, you know, your image and, you know, where it's so hard for you to put your phone down because your, your identity is so attached to the likes and follows and, and you see young people, right? Yeah. It's like, you know, they post their Insta story and they're like, okay, like who's viewing my story? Story. It's all about based yeah. upon other people. Yeah. So my encouragement for you, and I often tell young people, is if you're struggling with that today, I want to encourage you to delete your apps for a week. You know, mm -hmm. delete your TikTok, your Snapchat, like, you know, Instagram, whatever, and just go out and live life and have fun. 
you know, do what you, yeah. And reset, like do what you love. Like Mm -hmm. I had gotten back from Florida this week. I spent a week in Florida with, um, at one of our whosoever is guys, Jairus, he's a pastor at Calvary Bible fellowship in St. Pete. I spent an amazing week with them. Uh, We did a girls event. I spoke at their school and I purposed that week that I was in Florida to not be on social media. And what it caused me to do is to be present where I was at and not be so caught up in capturing a moment. Because when you're so busy capturing a moment, it keeps you from being present and it steals the joy of being present. And so I just want to encourage you guys to just, you know, just fast, right? When you fast, like those chains are truly broken of, you know, of, um, just struggling with, you know, identity and self-worth and self-consciousness and then go back on and see how it feels after. Because when I went back on, like I actually, when I was in Florida, I spent two weeks off social media, even after that in October and people were even texting me like, Hey dude, are you alive? <laughs> I'm like, yeah, dude, I'm alive. I'm just like, yeah. Funny how that yeah. Works. Cause when I got back from Florida, yeah. I was like, you know what? I just want to skate. I want to surf. I just want to go out and I want to just allow the Lord to speak to my heart and silence the voices of this world so I can tune into God's voice more, you know, spending time in his word, spending time with friends, just very wholesome, right? Yeah. Allowing God to speak to my heart, allowing him to give me my identity and worth so that when I go back, when I went back on social media, it was, it was like a complete reset and I have to do that regularly, you know? Yeah. And so it's something we will always struggle with, yeah. but now I'm realizing that there's days where, you know, even before coming here, I was like, Hey, you know, I'm going to be at river Christian fellowship. Then I just deleted my Instagram app until tonight, you know, yeah. where, where I'll go on because it's so healthy to have places for social media. Yeah. Like you post and then every time I post something on Instagram, I'll always delete it. I'll always delete my app after. So I'm not constantly getting these notifications and constantly tied to it, you know? And so, and you will be surprised when you look at your screen time on Sunday mornings, you know, screen time comes up on your, (laughs) on your phone, Uh how much time you spend on social media that you can actually spend doing other things, you know, like learning an instrument or you know, having coffee with a friend, you know, watching like a movie with family. Mm -hmm. There's so many that takes up so much of our time that you could spend elsewhere, you know? Yeah. And it's kind of just empty time. It is. So where you could be pouring that in. So many people are like, I read the Bible, but I'm so busy. Mm -hmm. And it's like, well, how many hours did you spend on social media last week? But Mm -hmm. it's just empty time with people that you probably don't even know yeah that you are pouring yourself into mm-hmm. and i enjoy social media like a lot of people yeah because i make connections i yeah. meet people um you can stay connected to people but the dangers mm-hmm. much yeah. outweigh yeah the good part yeah and i love what you said aj it's that you are trying you're living your life trying to impress people that you will never meet in person yeah you know and I think one of my favorite moments that I had was a couple years ago when I was in India, like the whole time, right? I'm talking, my phone was on airplane mode. And then when I would get back to the house we were staying at, there was Wi-Fi, you know, I would just message my family, hey, I'm good, you know, yeah. like I'm safe yeah. here. But I loved just completely disconnecting. And even when we were in Chile, you know, with the Whosoever's team last month, I was able, my phone was on airplane mode and then we had like Wi-Fi at the hotel but I loved just not even getting like calls coming in. And then I loved just during the day. Cause you know, people would hook up to Wi-Fi at like cafes we would go to yeah. and they were like, do you want a, the Wi-Fi?" And I just said, no, I'm good. Cause I loved disconnecting because yeah. when I, when you turn the noise down, like what Ryan Reese says, when you turn the noise down from the voices of this world, God's voice becomes louder and, and you can, you're more in tune with others cause you're more in tune with him. And yeah. you can pour into others. And so there's just so much freedom in not caring about what people think and allowing your life to be, you know, constantly surrounded by the validation of others. Yeah. There's freedom in that. Yeah. I think that's a good um, message for our listeners too. Maybe that's a challenge. Maybe try that to, you know, and start easy. Like just do like two days, you know, delete the mm-hmm. the apps. Um, I know Facebook is one I pretty much just, went completely off of because yeah. the notifications on the Facebook was like, bam. And Instagram still there's, there's negatives and positives of everything, but Instagram, it's like just the picture mm-hmm. and then you can move on where yeah. Facebook, it's a lot of people's opinions. Yeah. 
and a lot of tagging and I, I don't know. It just got way too much. So I deleted that, the app a long, long time ago. And then I just reinstalled it like after like a year probably. Yeah. So, and then it's like, okay, I'm going to delete this again because mm -hmm. it's just too much like notifications, craziness. So that's probably a challenge. Try for a day or two days, just that, you know, just try to unplug from social media and it will also put you closer to people that you have in your life right now. Be present. Because I find a lot of my best memories are the ones I don't put on social media. Exactly. And I purposely try to avoid putting in posts of my kids on social mm -hmm. media. And a lot of times people are like, well, don't you love your kids? Like, why don't you? I'm like, that's privacy. Yeah. Like, you know, yeah, I'll post different events or, you know, there will be like a picture of my kids walking away or backsides or something. Yeah, they're there. They're having a great time. But you got to have that side of you, too, that your friends, family, your inner circle knows. Yeah. And they are blessed to experience. And when you share that with everybody, it's just a lot because there are people that you don't even yeah. know out there that mm -hmm. are and safety as well. Yeah. So um, teenagers, young girls that mm -hmm. post their locations or where they're going. Oh, yeah. That is not and that is not a good thing um, for safety issues. You shouldn't be saying, hey, I'm going here tonight or mm -hmm. I'm going here. You really should be on the down low for safety as well, because if your Instagram is public, you don't know what people are using that for. So there's there's crazy people out there in the world. So you got to be careful with that as well. So. Um, this is AJ and I'm talking to Christina about the dangers of social media. Yeah. That's where we went with the interview today. But briefly, I just wanted to also touch on it's Christmas time mm -hmm. and some of the craziness that we get caught up in Christmas time. And I think everyone is so guilty of that, whether it's social media or just life. Um, how do you like relax and just chill because it's like about three weeks out from christmas yeah. now any anything that you do personally to just keep it about yeah. jesus and yeah this season yeah you know i think for me christmas got really real for me specifically last year in the last couple years because i was not able to spend christmas with my family specifically because in 2020 my parents invited uh, the family member that um violated me growing up to live back in our home you know and so i you know had moved out to where i live now in california in thousand oaks and so last year on christmas like i couldn't go home to spend with my family and so I ended up spending it um, alone and I ended up going to dinner with a couple of um, my friends that are missionaries up in the same area where I'm at. And this year for Christmas, to be honest with you, AJ, right before I went to Chile, I told the Lord, I said, I don't want to do Christmas this year, Lord, because I didn't want to be reminded of that loneliness. You know, I didn't want to be reminded of the fact that I didn't have like my family, you know, to go home to. And the Lord spoke to me in that moment and just said, Christina, who else feels the way that you do? Who else is unseen at Christmas? Like, what is the purpose of Christmas? Because for me, Christmas got really stripped down last year yeah. where I realized it's not about the trees and the gifts. It's not about, you know, the lights and the cooking. It's really about finding those who need to know that they're loved by the Lord. So even though I had a real, it was a hard Christmas day last year, what the Lord did in that moment for me right before I went to Chile was Christina like in Luke chapter two of how the angels revealed themselves to the shepherds, the unseen people of the time to invite them to see the Messiah, find those this year at Christmas that are right where you're at and remind them that they are seen and known and loved by the God of the universe. Cause that's why he came. That's what Christmas is about. It's his birthday, right? Yeah. It's about like, and what is the gift of Christmas is the birth of Christ. And so my friend Maddie and I, we're doing like a Hussar's Christmas tour where we're going into women's rehabs and mm -hmm. detention centers and women's prisons and sex trafficking recovery homes to remind these women that God sees them and loves them because they don't have families. They don't have anyone. They don't have anything. And so on that day when they are reminded of that, they could be reminded of something greater, which is what God reminded me of last year, that he is the greatest gift. And so last Christmas, even though it was hard, I say, God, because I have you. 
like I have everything because you're enough for me. And so to my friends out there, we could get so caught up in all of these things, which is awesome. The trees are awesome and the gifts mm-hmm. and family, but find those this Christmas that don't have family, yeah. that don't have anywhere to go. Like you wonder why Christmas has a high suicide rate because people feel hopeless and they're reminded of that. Find those that need Jesus, invite them to sit at your table, invite them to church, invite them to a Christmas gathering so that they could experience what the shepherds did in Luke chapter two, the greatest gift of all, which is the birth of Christ. Cause that's really the only thing that's going to satisfy them. Yeah, totally agree. Well, yeah. um, thank you for the interview today. Thank you. And excited for what's coming as well. Uh, this is AJ with effect radio and, um, real fast. We talked about dangers of social media, Yeah. but what is your social media? <laughs> oh, it's at, or you could actually follow at the whosoevers. Oh, okay. And you could find me from there because it's really long. But yeah, my <laughs> last name is a lot of vowels. But if you follow at the whosoevers, uh, you could find me on and there look as well. For the person with yes. the purple and blue hair. Sometimes yes. it changes. Though. Yeah. Yeah. So just colorful hair. Look <laughs> yeah. for the, the unicorn. <laughs> yes. Yes. Uh, this is AJ and this is Christina with Effect Radio.